companies around the world begin to move out of the crisis management stage post COVID and into recovery plans to get themselves hopefully back on track, there's a glaring problem that's not really being reported on at the moment, largely because it's rarely identified as an issue in the first place. So what is it? It's the disparity between your board and your finance team, and it's costing companies around the world not only a lot of money, but commercial success. Joining us today is Aleta Boshoff, partner and national leader at BDO Australia, and Ashley Bleeker, director of innovation and growth at BDO. Welcome to you both. How are you today? We are well, and Great, I'm happy to. I'm happy to say that I've actually managed to be to uh, go to the hairdresser yesterday, so <laughs> I've got the haircut. <laughs> it looks I'm great. still waiting, unfortunately. It looks great. That lo uh, it looks great. Well done to you. How did you manage that? Because it's like they only just opened here in Melbourne, and there were lines of twenty people. So how did you sneak in? Oh, I've got a very close relationship with my hairdresser and as Premier Andrews were making the announcement, I was fast as fingers first. <laughs> very good. Ready, ready to go here on Ticker. So looking great. Both of you are looking great. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, this is a really interesting one. Aleta, I'll start with you. So what, what is the problem here exactly and what are we missing? Um, Adrian, this disparity between boards and finance teams are putting at risk, you know, billions of dollars of value across balance sheets of corporate Australia. Now, organizations are grappling with the choice on how they report financial performance because accounting standards often provide accounting options. Now, it's this particular choice that is causing divergence between boards and finance teams and at times with catastrophic uh, catastrophic consequences you know boards are thinking bigger picture longer term more strategic and they are concerned about the organization's reputation ongoing success whereas finance teams are focused on operational expediency now there's an obvious clash now the fastest and simplest application of accounting standards does not necessarily result in the best commercial outcome for an organization. So there's indeed a mismatch in awareness between boards and finance teams, mainly around how they should most eff effectively report on financial performance to the market. Ashley, I'll head across to you now. So that's a huge claim of, of misalignment at board level and a powerful case for change, really. So how do you know that this misalignment of risk management between boards and finance teams actually does exist. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Well, I suppose we suspected it for a while and then we measured it, is the short answer. Okay. And so based on some of the work we've done in this space, advising uh, finance teams and boards across different types of organisations, our, our intuitive thesis was that they were focusing on different things at, at times. And so to support our thesis, we survey members of those boards and the finance teams in those organizations across multiple sectors and effectively we asked them three things so we asked them to rate which financial reporting risks were most relevant to them which were most likely to impact them and which would have the biggest impact on them if they eventuated and we ended up with over probably 1600 data points to work with and the evidence suggested that while the boards and finance teams are aligned on what are some of the most relevant risks to their business and which are likely to have a significant impact. They do indeed think differently about some of the critical issues in this space, and particularly those to which we just referred, being some of the bigger picture items that boards were heavily focused on. Yeah, it's a fascinating conversation. Uh, we're chatting with Aleta Boshoff and Ashley Bleeker, and thanks to our great partners at Six Clicks, you can get started with your free account today. Get on top of risk management and compliance for your business. Visit Six Clicks. Dot io to a letter now uh, once again now you authored a piece recently about what we're talking about here let's use the auditing and reporting obligation changes to lease accounting as the example if we can uh, where is the danger here specifically um you know I should start by saying AASB 16 around lease accounting is my favorite accounting standard. And it also coincidentally provides some great examples here. Now, one of um, our clients was staring down the barrel of wiping 600 million Aussie dollars of profit out of its profit and loss over the next four years. And this was purely as a result of choosing the simplest transitional method 
to le the, the new lease accounting standard. Now, this standard has an enterprise value or, or, or this company has an enterprise value of a couple of billion dollars and therefore this was hugely material. Um, but please don't think that this issue is only an issue for large organizations. Um, this issue is an issue for most of our clients and I've seen this uh, time and again when advising clients when they first implemented um, AASB 16. Um, I think the other thing to remember, this is one example of one accounting standard. So one decision around one accounting standard. Uh, so you can see how very quickly all the choices um, put at risk billions of dollars across balance sheets. Yeah, they're big numbers. And I can tell just by your tone how serious this can be. Um, I'll stay with you a letter if I can. Let's say that a finance team does take the quick and dirty approach. First, what are the consequences? And secondly, do you think it's, it is their fault? Uh, first of all, consequences. Now, the organisation uh, would not be achieving the best possible financial reporting outcome. You know, accounting standards often include accounting policy choices or options for organizations. Um, so are organizations choosing the easiest and the fastest option, or are they choosing the option that leads to the best, com best commercial outcome? So that's consequences. Uh, is this the fault of the finance teams? I would say no. Um, market forces are driving this divergence between boards and finance teams. Market forces are saying, you know, COVID-19 has caused cash flow issues. Boards are demanding management to do more with less. Uh, the world's consultants are telling all organizations reduce costs, even eliminate costs. Uh, finance teams are shrinking and finance teams are working harder. So everyone is working from home. Our stress levels are elevated. Mm. Uh, so can we really blame these finance teams uh, for trying to get to the, uh, the fastest and simplest approach? And finally, Ashley, I'll go to you. This sounds like we are staring down the barrel of a, of a disaster for shareholders, potentially. So when you found out how bad this issue is, how did you fix it firstly? And then can you give us uh, what BDO's solution is at the moment? Yeah, I think you know our approach has really been to try and deliver consistency across organisations. I suppose I mean three things by that. Consistency of measurement, consistency of thinking and consistency of action. And so... For measurement, you know, we focused our time and energy on getting organisations to measure their awareness of these issues around financial reporting, and then the, diver the, the diversion of perceptions across different parts of the business. And for us, we've invested in tools to enable this to be a data-driven exercise, which we think ultimately gives the business more certainty for making these kinds of important decisions, rather than just off-the-cuff um, intuition. Secondly, on thinking, you know, once an organisation can measure its divergence, it can then determine how best to align the thinking around it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's critical that everyone involved in determining how to manage financial reporting risks really has the opportunity to appreciate and evaluate the commercial impact of their decision making. And as we've already mentioned, you know, what's easiest now from a compliance perspective may not have the best commercial impact on an organisation's enterprise value in the short, medium or long term. And so thirdly on action, you know, once the thinking's aligned, only then can boards and finance teams act consistently. And it's a decision on how best to proceed to determine the most appropriate commercial outcome for the organisation that really drives enterprise value here. So I suppose we'd say that it's situations where we've been able to drive the alignment of measurement of thinking and of action, where we've had the biggest impact on an organisation's bottom line. I really enjoyed the chat. I learned plenty. Hopefully we can touch base again in the future. Uh, take care until then, guys. Really enjoyed having you on Ticker today. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you very much, Adrian.